shock wheels and tires here. Um, the day I bought the car, I drove home, took these tires off, threw them on the shelf. So they're still brand new 3Rs. They're about uh, a year and a half just sitting around. So I'm hoping they're still good. They should be. I'm going to be going through the performance manual and adjusting the camber and putting on the wind deflectors Deflector and front compartment air power steering deflector. So these, I think, deflect air for some more downforce or something. And these channel air towards the power steering motors to cool them off. And these, I have no idea. And then something else I got was these. So these are CTSV Cadillac front air deflectors to cool the brakes. The ones on the stock ZL110E are just these tiny little deflectors right there. So supposedly they're direct bolt on, they probably let a prop, they provide a little bit of extra cooling towards the brakes. All right, the oil debate. So ZL1 1LE requires 0W40 for the street and 15W50 for the track. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I wanted to get away with just using this or something a little thicker like a 0W50 but I couldn't really find it. 15W50 in the United States is pretty obtainable, it's cheap. 0W40 is even cheaper. So I'm just gonna swap out every time, a little bit of peace of mind. What people are saying on the forums is the 15W50 is thicker for track use for the ZL11LE for the higher G-forces. difference this is stock ZL110E air deflector for the brake cooling and this is the Cadillac CTSV my only worry is tire clearance so I was looking at the other side I don't know if anyone with ZL110E has done this yet but we shall see She said hi. Say hi. Hi. What's your name? Say your name. Say River. Rara. Alright, so to rotate the shock. There is an Allen bolt up there you need to take out. Before you take out the um, top bolts. And it is a five millimeter Allen. Alright, so this is it. So the Allen actually threads into this gold piece on the top of the shock.
Okay, when I took the shock out, the last bolt, it kind of fell down a bit, but you can move it with your hand a little bit. So you see it kind of fell down. So it was a 13 millimeter socket for these and a 19 millimeter for this one. And what you're doing is just rotating it, I guess clockwise. 180 degrees, but I'm gonna need two hands to support it here. All right, so I paused the video, just kind of playing with it, wiggled it around. It was kind of hard to figure out. There's a lot of holes, a lot of different alignments. Um, pretty much, I just stuck to trying to get it in the 180 position, lining up one hole, rotating it some more. Put a little bit of, a bit of support under the rotor um, so that way I can kind of lift it up and down. And then I found the holes it needs to be in. So, yeah, it's not very intuitive. Um, I don't know if, like, you definitely have to take the weight off because when I had a little bit of support on the jack, it couldn't spin at all. So, yeah, just play with it. This is the alignment. Um, kind of went off this hole here and made sure the track camber uh, wording is visible. All right, driver's side is done. This is how it looks, track camber there. Um, yeah, wasn't too bad. That pin does not go back in until you put it back to um, street camber. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to lower it the rest of the way. Just for the look. Um, if I have issues with understeer or oversteer, I can play with the rear sway bar link. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. You do that, take out this Allen bolt, and then probably just rotate it by hand. instructions for the underbody is to remove this piece and the other piece on this side which they are calling the noise shields I'll show you where it went it went right here I'll show you on this side so first thing is to remove this piece Next thing up is this air deflector. I think it shoots on the power steering motors. Just two of the bolts that you took out, 10 millimeters, and they go in these holes. So I got one installed, the other one's gonna go right there. So underbody, this is a support shield. And it goes right here. This is the driver's side. It goes behind here. So it supports this um, wheel well. There's like a push-in clip, a little torque screw, and a 10 mil underneath. One thing to notice is mine were label wrong. So this one says LH. That usually means left-hand side, which is driver's side but the RH fit the left side so just look out for that all right so I bought some stuff this bottle magnets to the rotor and some speed bleeders there's the part number pretty much they have a little spring and seat in them and you crack them a little bit and it'll just bleed Keep the pressure inside and then bleed out into the bottle so you can do it like one man bleeding so i sucked out what i could i'm using arbia 
660. Um, says the sucked out what I could. I'm gonna fill it up with this. I don't have a vacuum or anything. I don't want to create any air bubbles. So I'm gonna fill up the reservoir with the RBF 660 and just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding until eventually all the RBF 660s in there and the other shit's out. And I'm not too worried if it's like 5% of the old shit or something, I don't really care. All right, so I cracked the bleeder a little bit. Just gonna leave it like that. Still might seep out right here, so I'm gonna just put this rag right here. Put the bottle, magnet it to the rotor, and go in the car and pump it. See if this works. Alright, so it seems to be working, but it, it is still coming out of that. Um, it's still coming out of the threaded area, which I don't really like. But, starting at the right rear. Alright, that's quite a bit out. I'm going to tighten this one up and go to the driver's side rear. And then I'll come back to this one later. All done bleeding the brakes. It was pretty easy. Um, pretty much just kept topping up the fluid here. Remember to leave a little bit of a space for um, when the fluid gets hot, it might expand. A little GM symbol there I went off of. Um, so you just crack it just ever so slightly like 1% of a turn, you go in the car and you pump it and the pedal's kind of stiff so it takes like 2-3 seconds to get down to the bottom and that's good, I like that and you come out, start doing the next I started on the right rear first and I went to the left rear and then front right then front left just based on how far away it is from the uh, reservoir and um, yeah, did that about uh, two times per six or seven brake pumps each. I'm pretty confident that all the old brake fluid is out and the RBF 60 is in there. I'm okay with, um, you know, if it's like five or ten percent of the old shit in there, that's okay. But I'm pretty sure I got it all out, and I don't think there's a worry about mixing brake fluid. I did this to my old car and did a lot of track days with it. So yeah, I think the next thing is so the tires on and bring it to get an alignment. So I forgot to take off two things. One of them is this. This is a tire deflector. And the other thing is this. The splash shield. So that looks kind of hard to get to, but I think I can get there with a 10 millimeter wrench.
found the alignment shop. Um, kind of found a guy online that does them that also has a ZL1 Winnelly. And uh, I called three Chevy dealers and they said they wouldn't do a track alignment. They would just set it the back of the spec. So I posted online and this guy's like, oh, I have a ZL1 Winnelly. I race it. And uh, he's a Chevy mechanic. Track alignment's done. Um, cool guy Jeremy did it. So I did 2.8, negative 2.8 in the front and zero toe. And in the rear I did 1.8 and 0 0.07 toe. So not a very aggressive track alignment. It is for the front. Um, and it is for, um, I guess, certain cars, but not for this car. I see a lot of people going to 3, 3.1, 3.2. I think I've seen someone at 3.8. So I'm going to start here, check my tire wear, see that as, see how it's going. Um, I don't believe I'm going to be sending it as hard as this car is capable first time out. I do have some experience on track. Um, with bikes and cars so I think after a few track days I should be able to get up into um, the advanced group although my car has no real safety restraints I don't have a rear harness bar roll cage or uh, I don't have a Hans device yet or a five-point harness um, I don't plan on ever doing that um, I'll probably get a hybrid Hans eventually eventually because I still put my kid in the back, go grab ice cream, go to cruise nights and uh, cars and coffee and stuff like that. So I don't want to completely remove the back seats or have a bar back there. And I've seen some restraints where they hook to the like back seat anchors, like seat belt anchors, and then they kind of go through the back of your chair. But now that is like a four point harness that is holding you upright and if you roll over, you can't move your head out of the way, your head is straight up and down. So <clears throat> I was gonna go with that, but I've seen someone um, explain an accident before where they had that system and they quickly unbuckled themselves to actually tilt their head down before the roof caved in on a Honda. So that was uh, a learning experience. So hybrid Hans with a factory seat belt, a factory seat, I'm gonna try and leave it like that. This car, I think, is gonna be a collector car one day too, so I don't wanna modify it way too much, although I do wanna do some power odds, but for the better. You know, power mods that can be reversible. Don't wanna dig into the engine, I just wanna do a 2650 blower to make it more cleaner power, like the blower on the on the Magnuson has bigger cooling blocks, and the LT4 is known to overheat. Uh, not overheat, but get heat soaked. And then, Get rid of the cats. If we're gonna keep doing track days, gonna be blowing out cats. So, um, you know, headers to no cats, right to the X pipe. And uh, yeah, so before before I go to the track, I'm going to change out my engine oil to 15W50, and I am gonna take out the rain duck in there and then that is it my car is ready um i'll put a recap up on the screen of everything i did but yeah i think she's pretty much ready to hit the track um not too much work it is kind of overwhelming when you look at how much you have to do but 
I spent about, I think, three hours in the garage to get it done, and then, yeah, she's ready, I think. <laughs>